short introductory video. Uh, you're going to come back to this way. So I suggest you watch it. There are, as you can see, a lot of uh, knobs and levers on this machine, and I'm actually holding this camera by hand. I usually prefer to use a tripod, but because of the angles I'm going to have to get at here to get uh, to all this, uh, these mechanisms, I'm going to do some of this with a handheld camera. So, what I want to show you first, obviously, this is pretty self explanatory. This just turns the wheel off and on, okay? So there's your grinding wheel, and here's your on-off switch. We don't need to turn that on right now, but that's how that works, and I guess we will. Next, on the top of the uh, housing for the wheel, we've got a diamond dresser here. And basically that just swings back and forth to dress a normal grinding wheel, not a diamond one like this. That won't work, okay? But if you had a normal cup wheel on here, this is how you would dress the wheel and basically what we have here are a few adjustments on that you bring it into the wheel but with this fine knob adjustment here that brings it closer and closer you can see just by doing that I'm starting to touch the wheel that backs it off now if you run out of travel with the thumb screw then all you have to do is take your diamond and loosen it with this screw and you can slide your diamond in and out and then get it closer to the wheel and then go back to using your adjustment. Very simple. So we've covered two things. We've got the power switch, the diamond dresser, okay? Hopefully the machine you bought comes with that. It's a nice feature. Again though, this is only for using regular grit wheels on here that you would be grinding high speed cutters with. Okay, a few other things we want to cover in this introductory, introductory video. We've got this main cross slide here and everything rides on what I call this tube here, okay? This main shaft here. And Basically, um, what you have over here is a micrometer adjustment. And you, what you do is you loosen this, and that also lets it go back and forth, as you can see. Okay? But when, you, when this is loose, you can move the whole carriage back and forth. This is for fine adjustment only. Now, as you just saw, when I loosened that, this whole lets this whole carriage move back and forth, and that's how we will be grinding our cutters. So the, really the only time uh, I do tighten that, and I'm going to show you that in a second, why I do tighten this, uh, here's the first reason. If you touch the side of a cutter and you just need to move in to a specific dimension, you would lock this, and then the, that won't let this turn, okay? Then you would set your zero here, and it's not moving anything except the dial, so I can set a zero. Okay, there's a zero set. Now if I loosen this, this gives me a fine adjustment now to move the carriage back and forth. And I don't know if you can see it actually moving or not. Okay? Now, uh, let's go on to the next way to use this crossbar. Okay, so in the previous video I showed you that uh, this locks the whole bar. Okay, when I loosen this I can move this back and forth. Now, what I'm going to do next is show you this lever. And again, this is all going to come into play when we start grinding cutters, but I need you to show you a few things. This lever here. If we loosen that and tighten this one on the right that tightens the whole tube down, now we can move this wherever we want. We can loosen it, we can drag it right, we can drag it left, and we can move it back and forth. And the reason you have to do that sometimes is because you run out of travel with the various vernier scales on here, okay? And you have to loosen the whole thing and get it to come over or back up and then you get it close with that and then lock it. Then what you would do is loosen this bar on the right again that loosens the whole cross slide tube and now this is going back and forth. Now let's say I wanted to bring this cutter up into this wheel this way. And you'll see me do that when we start grinding these cutters but it's, it, obviously it's not going to make it there. Okay. Now we have an adjustment here and if I keep backing this off it's going to get me closer but I'm going to run out of travel. So what I'm going to do is lock this lever on the right that locks the whole tube again. We'll loosen this. Now I can get a lock closer. Loosen the lock. Now, when I'm grinding my cutter, this is a stop, basically. I may have moved it up a little. No, there it is. So that's about where I want it. You'll see me use this again. So again, covering that, this main lever here loosens the whole assembly here. This lever on the right, far right, locks the whole uh, tube and nothing's moving right now. I can force it, okay? So basically when you're grinding cutters, this will always be tight and this will be loose on the right here. And this is what lets you go back and forth into the wheel.
Okay, continuing on here. Here's another lever I want to show you. It's this one right here. And when we loosen that one, which is a little tight, this swings your tool back and forth this way. And you'll see down here, there's a scale to set an angle here. 98% of the times you use this grinder, all we're going to do is, and it's very simple to read, there's a line there, degrees here, and what you're going to do is slide this down to 25 degrees and lock it. And leave it at 25 degrees, and I'll show you why. We have a knob here that lets Let's go at 90 degrees. Very important for swinging your radiuses on your cutters. If it's locked, it won't move. Unlocked, it does move, okay? Again, you'll see all this in action when we grind, actually start grinding the cutters. A few other knobs I want to show you. Loosening this knob lets the whole assembly this way move back and forth. And then you can lock it. What you have over here, let's get the handheld out. Okay, let's go back and do that again. If I loosen this knob here on the side of the collet, you can see I can slide this whole thing back and forth. For fine adjustment, what you do on this side is lock this, and this will let you screw it back in and forth, back and forth this way, in and out. Okay, and again, you're going to see me use that. And one of the final things I want to show you is this very important scale down here. That would be right there. And I'm going to show you how to adjust that vernier. To adjust the vernier, that's this knob here. And there's a lock for that underneath. A lot of locks on this thing. Let's get to that one. On the very back, this lock locks this so we can't go back and forth. So what we're going to do now if you watch you can see I'm slowly moving this carousel in and out and this is how we offset our cutter blank to swing a radius and there's specific numbers you have to set the vernier at and I'm going to uh, show you on this uh, whole series on why you need to do it and how to do it. Okay, what, next thing I want to show you is your actual collet here. This happens to be a 3 16 collet and basically what you've got here is a key and you put this in, or a keyway, and you'll put it in and just gently line it up until it matches the key inside the collet. You've got this knob on the back that tightens the collet in. Basically what's going on here is this lets it spin, okay? now. You'll see that I've got a little pin here that I can pull out and there's three holes around the top. The one on the left lets it go 90 degrees only and I'm going to show you why you need to know that. The one in the middle locks it in place. It won't move. The one on the right lets it spin freely. Anytime you really want it to spin freely though you can just pull this out and let it rest on the top shelf and it'll, because it's not indexed in any of the holes, it'll still spin freely. Then the last thing, before we actually start grinding a cutter here, is if you rotate this, and you're going to have to do this yourself, I'll try to get a picture of it, but there is a red dot that shows up in this glass window here, and I'll try to get a picture of that. That red dot means something, okay? So don't forget about the red dot. So what we're going to do next is uh, learn how to set this. We're going to grind a cutter. I'm going to show you which one it is, and uh, off we go.